In this lecture, we are going to study the solar system dynamics. And the first topic is the Kepler's law and the universal law of gravitation. We use the Kepler's laws and derive the universal law of gravitation. That's the first topic. In the second topic, we use the Newton's laws and the universal law of gravitation and derive the orbit of planet. In the third topic, we apply the two-body problems. In the fourth topic, we use the three-body problems. Today, we are going to study the Kepler's law and the universal law of gravitation. First of all, we'd like to study the supernova explosion. That event of the supernova explosions, Kepler discovered. Then, the physics started, science started, after the discovery of the supernova explosion. And the second topic is Kepler's law of planetary motions. Then, we'd like to explain each law, Kepler's first law, Kepler's second law, and the Kepler equations. And finally, we derive the universal law of gravitation. First of all, we'd like to start with the supernova explosion. Before the Kepler's, people believed the Aristotle universe. In the Aristotle universe, the universe is divided into the two worlds, perfect world and the imperfect world. In the perfect world, uh, things cannot be broken. Perfect world uh, and the imperfect world is divided by the orbit of the moons. Outside the orbit of the moons, the perfect world exists. In the perfect world, uh, things can not be broken. Uh, things can keep their positions. And the shape of the object in is a circle. In the imperfect world, inside of the orbit of the moon is an imperfect world. As things can be broken. Things can be broken. As things fall to the ground. Fall to the ground. This is an imperfect world. This is the Aristotle universe. Then, as I explained, at the very end stage of the stars, Stars exploded as a super in the supernova explosions. Tycho was a teacher of the Kepler's. He discovered supernova explosion 1572s. So he considered this explosion is happening beyond the orbit of the moon, but he could not believe this observation because he this observation is against the Aristotle universe. So he just could not believe his observations. And about 30 years later, Johannes Kepler discovered another supernova explosion. Brightness of the supernova explosion is increasing suddenly. Then Johannes Kepler tried to calculate the distance to the, this suddenly appeared object. And he found that actually the, this object should be located beyond the orbit of the moon. And he realized the object can be broken even the beyond the orbit of the moon. And he could not believe the Aristotle universe. He always have to believe the observational result. And then after that, these observations, he compiled his observational data into the three laws we call Kepler's three laws. So this is the Kepler's law of the planetary motion. 
first rose is a the planet moves in ellipse with the sun at one focus. Actually, this first sentence is a very, very revolutionary idea because the people believed in the Aristotle universe. Aristotle said objects have to be the circular shape. If the object is located beyond the orbit of the moon. So this idea, first Kepler's law, is very against the Aristotle universe. It's not circle. So if you listen to the, this first law right now, sounds very easy, but it is quite difficult to accept the strange ideas at these times. The second law, radius vector from the sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas in the equal period of time. This is second law. Third law is a square of the orbital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the same major axis of the planet. So later I'd like to explain the first law. Planet moves in ellipse with the sun at one focus. Sun is located one of the focus of the each elliptical orbit. So in this case we consider two planets. Then each planet for the orbit of the each planet, sun is located at the focus. This is the first law. So as I explained, this is really revolutionary ideas. Kepler's second law, radius vectors from the sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal period of time. Radius vectors, so if you consider this planet, this is radius vectors, sweeps out areas so after the time of the delta t, this planet sweeps out these areas. If you take the same amount of time delta t, when the planet is moving to different positions, then calculate the areas sweeped by the radius vectors. This s sub 1, s sub 2 is equal. This is the Kepler's second law. So Kepler's first law and the Kepler's second law, we only need a single planet. Kepler's third law is a very different. In this case, we consider the two planets at, at the same time. Kepler's third law said, square of the orbital period T of a planet is proportional to the cube of the same major axis of the planet. So this means T squared is proportional to the A cube. So this means if you consider two planets, blue planet and red planet, red planet has the same major axis of the A sub 2 and the period is the T sub 2 and the blue planet has the same major axis of the A sub months. And the T sub 1 is a period. Then Kepler's third law said we should compare the period. Take a ratio. Take a squares. Is equal to the same major axis. Ratio of the same major axis to the cube is equal from the, this equation. This is the Kepler's third law. Okay, so this is the end of the first session.